What's going on guys? Welcome to your Tesla guide. And today we are going to get started on what is the most common questions that I get as a Tesla owner, which is charging. So let's get right into it. So to charge at home, there are actually several ways you can do that. The first way is to get a high power wall connector HPWC from Tesla and you would get it installed in like your garage and that actually works for both indoor and outdoor. I don't want to get too technical but it does run on 220 volt and it's a 60 amp breaker that you need. And what that means is that it charges roughly about 40 miles per hour for your car. And that's a pretty good rate. So you charge it overnight, by the morning it'll be completely full at 100% or 80% or whatever you charge it at. So that's option number one, and that is the most common. The other way you can do it is actually by something like this. So this is a brand new one, and this is a mobile connector. It does come with this NEMA 1450, right? And this is really important because with this, you can get about 25 miles or somewhere around that. Like I think it's like 20 or 30 on a Model 3 or Y. It depends also, like Model S and X charges a little bit slower. It's kind of like a dryer outlet. So think about like that in a, like a household way of saying that. Uh, it also comes with this, and this is a standard 515. That's what the technical term it is. But this is like the standard outlet that you would use to like charge your stuff, right? Um, you can do this, but you're literally gonna get like three to five miles an hour. So um, these aren't necessarily your only options, but for Tesla, these are gonna be your most common one. And if you're like going to like maybe your in-laws or your family, like I would recommend getting like a mobile connector. So at the least you can get some, you know, trickle charging three miles an hour, whatever that is, while you're enjoying time with your family. So that question is really good because I think that's like people think, oh, it's the same as a gas car anyway. I mean, you're going to pay for that, right? But it really isn't. It's significantly cheaper. So actually in the Tesla app, if you go to charging, charge stats, um, you could actually see what your gas savings are. It shows even my percentages, right? Like 25% is at home, 40% at work, and 13% at supercharger, and 22% is other. And others is like, you know, if I charge point is like probably the one I use the most. But all in all, my cost um, is um, $20 at home. The other thing that you should keep in mind is that a lot of states do this thing is during off peak hours, you get a cheaper rate of electricity. So in your car, you could schedule your charging so that it starts in those off peak hours, if that makes sense, right? So I'm in Tennessee, I'm in Chattanooga, like we don't really have that. So in the app itself, you could actually set your charging costs and then go into the state that you are and it'll ask for like the utility, the electricity, right? Like, so for me, it's like EPB, right? Um, but it's relatively cheap. It's how much does it cost to actually like charge your car? It's roughly between one fourth, maybe one third of what you would pay. And this is relative, right? Because like you can't compare a Model 3 to a Hummer. You know, you got to compare like a Model 3 to like a Corolla or something like that. So if you do that, it's probably about one third, one fourth roughly. And your electricity bill isn't going to go up. And don't forget of about the off peak hours and it'll save you a lot of money. You can definitely use a normal outlet. Uh, and normal outlets are typically on a 50 amp breaker or 20 amp breaker, right? But the main thing that you have to worry about is the extension cord, right? Like you can't just use like the extension cord that you use for like your laptop and your office or something to charge your EV. These are like charging your MacBook <laughs> and your laptop or your iPhone is very different from charging an 82 kilowatt battery size full EV, right? So a lot more current is obviously flowing through that cable. So in order to be safe and you know, you want, we want to make sure that everything is safe whenever you do this is just for reference, when you install like a Tesla charger, like a wall connector charger, you're using a six gauge wire, right? It's a pretty thick wire and typically those are used for, you know, higher amperages, right? So when you're using an extension cord for a 110 outlet, I would typically recommend a 10 um, AWG, that's the term that they use, 10 gauge. And that just kind of gives you that um, peace of mind that it's gonna be okay. 
The other thing about extension cords is that if you were to use it, monitor it, don't leave for days and stuff. Like if you're going on an airport, don't leave it like that. And don't put it on like multiple splitters and you know, uh, extension of an extension and stuff like that. As far as the length, I will try to keep it as short as possible. Um, the longer the length, the higher the risk of a voltage drop. Um, so if you can do like 25, you know, 50 if you have to, I think once you get a little bit past that, you, you have a little bit more risk. But as long as you have a very heavy duty, um, you're gonna be mitigating a lot of that risk. Yeah, in fact, um, the high power wall connector that Tesla sells is, is perfect for in, in indoors and outdoors, right? So like my personal one at home is actually installed outdoors. And we did a video about installing that. It's literally at the side of my home um, and it has no issues whatsoever. Um, the thing is that the Tesla charger have multiple holes like from the bottom, from the back, so that it keeps it weatherproof, right? It has a seal. It hasn't had any issues with rain, even with heavy downpour or anything like that. If you're really worried about that, some people like make a little house for it, you know, and you can do that if you're going to install it outdoors, but no worries for that. Can you charge in the elements? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think if you're doing like a thunderstorm and it's like absolutely bad and there's like lightning everywhere and stuff, like if you really have to charge, you know, I guess that's okay. If the car is done charging, there's not actually electricity like flowing in and the car itself has a safety mechanism built in. So there's low risk. Um, a lightning really has to hit that car, I guess, to like fry it. And then as far as like the snow, um, you can definitely charge. That's not really a problem. Um, the newer Teslas, like the Model 3 and Y and the SNX, they have heat element, heating elements built into the charging area. So earlier, like in the 17 and 18 models of the Model 3, like the Northern States definitely suffered and sometimes they couldn't open that. So now it's off, doesn't have any issues and you should be totally fine. While there's a low risk of lightning hitting your Tesla, there's a high risk of us being back here every week. So please click on that subscribe button. There's a lot of debate and this is like what Tesla recommends. So I'm just gonna kind of go with that. Um, if you don't have an LFP battery, you should, they typically say to charge from 20 to 80% or go to 100 if you're going on trips. If you do have an LFP battery, the battery is a lot more stable. So they actually do recommend you charge you 100. So if you actually go into your Tesla and you go to additional information, uh, it'll actually say what kind of battery you have. And if it says lithium iron phosphate, that means you have LFP. So supercharging is super easy. <laughs> Sorry, that was so bad. Uh, but it is very easy. I mean, literally, you just need to go to your app once you have your Tesla and then set up your credit card information. And then you go to a supercharger, you click on the button, your charge port opens, and then you plug it in, you get a green light, and then that means it's charging. And then you get built, it automatically charges your credit card, and then you can go on your way to your trip. I mean, they just put their 50th supercharger installed, and that's just, what? Their <laughs> 50th. There's only one in every state. Um, they just installed their 50 thousands, thousands, <laughs> 50K, I'm just gonna say 50K. They just installed their 50K supercharger in the US and around the world. So there are so many out there and I love how they strategize like where they're gonna be putting it. So it's always on the highway. So you're not having to like go all the way out to like charge and stuff. This right here is level one, using your mobile connector, right? And then your home connector is level two. Supercharger is level three. And what that means is it's really freaking fast. And Tesla right now is on version three of their supercharger. So if you're on a version two, it can charge about 600, five to 600 miles per hour at the peak. And that's really important to note. But on a version three, it can go as high as it's definitely go high, uh, higher than a thousand. Uh, it doesn't stay there that long, but when you're going from like 20 to 80%, that from 20 to like 50 to 60%, I mean, it's incredibly fast. And then after that, it drops as it gets closer to 80. 
Um, so when you're asking about how long it takes, honestly, you can charge as little as like 15 minutes all the way to 30 minutes. But time-wise, it doesn't make sense for you to try to go from like 5% to 100. If you stay in that 20 to 80, just find another supercharger along the way and then just charge another 15, 20 minutes, and then you should be good to go. So for supercharger etiquette, there's a, there's a few. One of them is um, usually there's like chargers lined up and then there's one on the side kind of like isolated is not really for everybody it's actually for people who's like pulling something like an rv so usually if you have other spaces available you shouldn't take that and try to you know leave it for a person that needs it so that's number one um if you're on a v2 usually and i still do this even if i you know it's hard to tell like until you're up there if it's a v2 or v3 although you could it actually tells you on the the map of your tesla what you're going to get right like v2 or v3 uh, the other one is like, if you have like, let's say six chargers, usually there's more, but instead of like parking right next to it, if there's space, you should take the 2A and not the 1B. And the reason is a lot of times the transformers are shared. So once another person is right next to the 1A and 1B, then your, both of those go down. And that's changing though with the newer, the way they're putting their chargers. So that's actually happening less, but that still happens in like the older ones. Um, other things is like, you know, try not to trash that area. Like, you know, if you see a garbage, like pick it up, you know, let's try to keep this area clean. But other than that, you know, they're very simple. A lot of cool people I've met at Superchargers. A lot of people like to talk about their cars and you meet some really cool people. So don't be afraid say hi to people and, you know, have fun. There's other chargers out there, right? So there's level three, there's Electrify America. That's probably the most like well-known one. And you could use a CCS adapter. It's something like this, but much bigger. So you could use that. Uh, there's a lot of level twos out there. Like there's Blink, there's Charge Point. Well, the Charge Point is really cool because I have it on my watch and then it's like NFC. Uh, but there's another called uh, PlugShare, app called PlugShare. And that one actually tells you what other chargers are available to you other than the Tesla charger. So once you get to a new city or if you're traveling and you want to know, like typically I book a hotel that has a charger, it would be a lot easier for me. Um, that's what you can do is use an app like PlugShare and then find out what chargers are available. This adapter, uh, J1772, actually does come with the Tesla. Um, and that may change in the future. I don't know yet. I hope it doesn't because this is very important and this has saved me a lot. Like, Charge Point uses this, right? And a lot of other charging networks use it. The CCS, I've literally used it once. And then I also have a Chatimo adapter somewhere in there. And I've used it once for a video that we were shooting. But like, I've never used it. So I don't actually bring that anywhere I go. I just, this is the most important one that you need. Like always guys, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions about charging, let us know in the comments below. We'd be happy to answer. Check out our charging guide where we talk a little bit more in depth about charging, superchargers and all that stuff. And also check out another video out about installing your wall connector. We're doing this series and we have a lot more coming up. Um, so please subscribe. We're gonna have a lot more information for the new owner's guide and answering all the common questions that you may have about EV ownership and Tesla ownership. We'll see you next time.